What's happening, guys? Welcome to the latest instalment of the Patriot Campers virtual show. I'm Justin Monisalvo, the founder and CEO of Patriot Campers, and sitting beside me, Tommy Mills, uh, National Sales Manager for Patriot Campers. So on tonight's show, tonight's virtual show, we've got some brand new stuff coming for you. As far as the show goes, we've got uh, some brand new segments. Yes. Got a little bit of a history behind the brand, behind <laughs> Patriot. We're kind of starting to refine this a little bit better. So tonight I think is going to be a fantastic episode because we are presenting the flagship model. That's it. The, the ultimate the, family package. The Patriot Campers X1. Now, the X1 is our, look, it's our staple model. It is what started the brand where Patriot Campers all came about back in 2013 when I designed the first camper trailer and built the Patriot Campers brand around this one particular model. And it's still our number one seller. Absolutely, it is. It's, it's the favorite, it's the people's champ when it comes to Patriot Campers. Now, the biggest thing for the Patriot X1 is six times this camper trailer has won Australian Camper Trailer of the Year. And once it's won in the United States. And that's a pretty amazing feat for a company that's seven yeah, years old. Huge. But I think, obviously I'm a little bit biased, the product, definitely speaks for itself. But what we're gonna do uh, to kick this show into gear, we're gonna do a quick recap on the wins that the X1 has had at Australian Camper Trailer of the Year. Check out this little clip. Pretty amazing when you see it put together like that, isn't it? So many changes. You know what it feels like? It feels like watching one of your kids grow. <laughs> you know, when you, when you see the changes <laughs> yeah. throughout, and I'll need to correct myself, it's actually won, the X1 has won five times Australian Camper Trailer uh, of the Year winner out of the seven times that the brand has won Australian Camper Trailer of the Year. But getting back to it, it is like watching one of your kids grow. You know, you would notice in there the price point change through the years of the X1. Yeah, I think that's the biggest standout for it's, me. It's a big one because when the, look, when the, the product was first uh, conceived, when it first came together, we were, we were a sheet metal company and we were very, very good at what we did, but we didn't know a lot about electronics. We didn't know a lot about wiring harnesses or OE style manufacturing or suspension. What we were extremely good at and we still are extremely good at is sheet metal but the evolution through the years has really come predominantly from my family, hasn't it? Absolutely, and I think the, the big change I saw there was the tent. Yeah, the tent was the biggest Huge. one. You know, now featuring the integrated tent, the CS3 tent, uh, the staircase is a big one. But as my family's um, dynamics change, you know, the kids, uh, you, might, you might have seen them, actually, we're gonna run something uh, pretty shortly to show the change in my family uh, life throughout the years and the style of camping that we did that's really gonna help paint the picture on the evolution of where the X1 is at now. Now couple that with uh, the response from the customers, what the industry wanted, what the market wanted, the comforts, um, that really, it paints a picture on where the X1 is at today. So let's quickly jump into uh, that clip and then we'll talk about what we're gonna do tonight, how we're gonna run through this whole program. Let's have a look through uh, the family history with Patriot Campers and the Morning Selvo family.
we took. <laughs> There's Pretty, so many memories. Now that actually is like watching <laughs> your kids grow up. So you can see there, you can see as it's, as it's changed, life has changed for us and the style of camping has changed for us. The X1 was developed into that camper trailer that could suit a family of five. And, and you've experienced it too, with all the travels you've done with your kids in the X1. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the tent is, is amazing what it can accommodate, you mm. know, from, from small families right up to big families like yourself. Mm. Uh, and families of six, you know, when there's extra. Um, it's, it's one of the best tents in the market. And we're definitely going to get into that a little bit later on when Tommy gets down to the showroom. Um, we might touch on tech specs. Tom, do you want to run them through the tech specs of the X1? Absolutely. So tech specs of the X1, um, you've got, uh, it's 950 kilos dry with a GVM of 1600 kilos um, and look, it's got 2000 litres of storage. But what's really great about the X1 and why so many people um, want to tow it is because it's so small. You know, 3.65 metres long, 1.85 metres wide, it's going to sit pretty much behind any vehicle in any track. But the best thing is it sits in your garage on charge, ready to go whenever you want it. Uh, and that's a great, one of the best features. And that's a really big point. I think we've touched on that in a couple of our uh, videos before in the past. When it comes to um, storage of a camper trailer or any of that sort of product, it's a big consideration that you need to make um, when you're purchasing something, where you're gonna put it. And the X1, most of our models will fit into a garage besides when you get into the toy haulers, um, which makes that traveling that much easier. So look, what we'll actually do now um, we might get Tommy down into the showroom, but before we do, maybe a couple of little housekeeping things. Um, Ryan and Graham are gonna be online right now answering all the questions. So guys, please feel free to fire the questions away as we go. We're gonna do a Q and A section right at the end of the video, where Tommy will rejoin me up here at the news desk. That's it. And we'll get into you know some of the bigger questions or, or more common questions. But throughout this series, I can see there, I'm watching it live. We've got a couple of our uh, uh, Patriot owners on there. The Mad Crew, Mitch, Ames, Rides, they're on there right now. Now these guys are living out of an X1 currently with their young son doing their big lap around Australia. Uh, they've had their Patriot camper for a couple of years. I don't think besides me, that there's many people in this world that have spent that much time with an X1. Uh, so I'm hoping this crew is gonna be there to answer some questions. Um, Dealerships at the moment, Graham, uh, Graham is from uh, Camping Adventures down in Melbourne. Ryan is from New South Wales from Off Grid Outfitters. We also have a dealer over in Perth. A brand new dealer coming in Western Australia, Patriot HQ here on the Gold Coast. Our guys, our team in America. And don't forget SA, TJ Nailsworth in South Australia. Sorry guys. <laughs> and also uh, the crew at TIC over in Mongolia. So let's get into it. What we'll do is we'll get Tommy down into the showroom Go visit, the, uh, go visit the X1 that you see popping up on your screen there. I'll be sitting here at the desk. You know the drum. Nice and comfortable. I think we start with the chassis, so let's get into it. See you then. Patriot X1 chassis, fundamentally, it is the same chassis that sits under uh, the X1N and the X1H. Now, this is a product that's been a high level of concentration for us here at Patriot Campers. I think from the start, the design was absolutely amazing, but now we've really refined this design into a completely unstoppable piece of gear. Uh, it's sitting on uh, Cruise Master suspension, X Cruise suspension. Now, the X Cruise was developed uh, with Cruise Master specifically for the Patriot Campers range and the low tear weight. Uh, I think we got Tommy down there. Tom, you in there? Mate, I'm here, ready to go. Gotcha, mate. So, mate, you want to um, you want to jump into it? Let's um, let's roll through that chassis. Absolutely. So, uh, we'll start off here. We'll start off with the hitch. So, the DA35 hitch comes with all our models. Okay, it's the easiest hitch to use on the market. And look, it's the safest, maximum articulation in all your four wheel driving. Um, look, the, the guys from Cruise Master have done a great job. It's so easy to use. We'll also sp uh, go to the uh, drawbar here. What I love about the drawbar is all the laser cutting and, and being able to feature the name in the side. Look, not only does it reduce weight, but there's strength still there in the chassis. Now the chassis is an interlocked welded, hot dip galvanized um, construction. Um, and there's the strength in there is, is unbelievable. And we haven't had a break so far. Um, <clears throat> but also, 
the laser cutting plays a massive part in all of the features on the camper trailer and especially the chassis. Um, I've mentioned before, reducing the weight and also giving it that strength as well. Um, we've got the handbrake on the drawbar as well. That's connected to your 10 inch electric drum brake. So you need a brake controller on your vehicle. Um, you've got an Anson plug on the drawbar and that's going to basically connect straight to your car as well. Um, if we hop Tom, can I jump in there for a sec, mate? Yes. Um, I did get a query the other day, actually, and this is a pretty good point. Anderson plugs are not very common in the United States. Are you aware of that? No idea about that at all. Okay, so in the United States, they run a different style of pin, and they run a very small voltage pin uh, straight into the trailer plug, which um, powers uh, their RVs or their trailers or whatever they're towing. This is a 50 amp Anderson plug, so for our guys in the United States that might not be familiar with an Anderson plug, is only because it's not as common as they are in Australia. We've got a 30 amp charger sitting in the, the camper trailer, so this is a pure source of DC charge. So whilst you're driving down the highway, and it's the majority of charge that you're going to be utilising when you're remote, if you're doing long distance travelling. Obviously, you have a solar input there and you have mains power, so 110 volt if you're in the United States or 240 volt if you're here in Australia or 220 in Mongolia. But that Anderson plug there is going to pump in that full amount of charge. You can see that massive cable. Can we get a shot of the cable coming out the back of the Anderson mm. plug? So that's a 6 bayonet cable. Uh, typically speaking, uh, what you'll see in the United States is like a 3 mil um, wire cable that, look, I don't know the specs on the actual voltage that it can deliver, but that's what the Anderson plug's all about for our US uh, viewers. Thanks, Justin. Uh, that's a good bit of information. I know, I'll now know when I go to America and start selling them. <laughs> so if we hop underneath, I want to show you guys underneath um, a little bit how you can see the construction. Um, you've got the main structural components of the, of the chassis is all galvanised steel. Then you've got the aluminium outriggers um, that make up the rest. Now, the reason why we've done that is for pure weight saving. Um, it's also strong, but it's going to save that weight. And that's what it's all about when you're towing a camper trailer. Um, we'll also have a look at here. We've got the large uh, rock, rock uh, guards there. They're going to protect your suspension, uh, brake cables, anything like that from uh, any stray rocks that might want to uh, impact your trip. Um, but also, the main thing is, let's go to the back of the trailer because that's where you're going to see in its all, all its glory. <clears throat> Come with me. Now what's great about a camper trailer, especially a Patriot, is when you're travelling in groups, um, is that you've got recovery points directly connected to the chassis, okay? So they're very, very strong, they're, they're fully rated and they're going to be able to recover or be recovered uh, when on your trips. We've also got an accessories hitch here in the back and that is for carrying um, look, bikes. A lot of people take their push bikes with them. You can put a hitch receiver in there um, so you can do that. And there's some great companies out there making some really good bike carriers. Let's come underneath the trailer though, because that's, uh, that's what we're talking about, is the, main, is the main chassis. You can see underneath you've got two water tanks up in between the chassis rails, um, giving you that, um, the weight down low. So when you're full driving, the trailer's nice and stable. Directly connected to the chassis as well as your suspension arms, which is made by Cruise Master, and they're called the X-Cruise Suspension. We sort of teamed up together with them um, to make that happen. And this is a roll sleeve airbag on this model here. Standard on X1 though is a coil suspension. Okay, so the airbags are the upgrade. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But you can see the dual shocks there. This is such a comfortable ride. And when you see them in performing in full drive conditions, you can just see how stable and comfortable. Your stuff in the back isn't gonna get shaken around. Can I pop in on that shot that you've got there? Let's, um, let's go back to that shot that you can see there of that, see that tapered piston at the bottom. So Tommy, can you just put your finger on uh, the bottom underneath that airbag there? Just here? Yep, so what you can see there guys, that's, that's actually a tapered piston on the bottom of the airbag. And fundamentally what that does is it changes the progression of the, well it makes the spring rate progressive as it compresses through the stroke. So what it's doing is changing the volume of air inside of that airbag and that piston there, the shape of that piston is tuned specifically um, for the weight of the Patriot X1. So there's, there's a little tip that, um, that people might know. If you do actually follow one of these trailers down the road, um, on coil springs, they ride amazing. On airbags, it takes it to a completely different level um, because you have the ability to adjust the pressure inside of those bags. So when you're towing, you can set the thing up perfectly for the load that you're carrying. Thanks, Justin. 
Okay, no worries. So also under there, you'll see one of the, um, the front tank has a, um, a bash guard on the front, and that's gonna protect, because they're po uh, uh, BPA-free polyurethane uh, tanks. So they're gonna protect them from getting any um, rocks or damaging uh, to them when they're traveling. Um, but look, that's, that's kind of a lot of your chassis there, a lot of componentry. Um, they guys are so strong, and uh, again, like I said, we haven't broken one to date. Awesome, thanks Tom. Um, I suppose probably the last point to, to look at there, and you see the positioning of the water tanks, uh, we might get into in this video, we might in another video down the track talk about the batteries as well, but all of that heavy, uh, the heavy weight, the water tanks, if you can imagine there's 150 odd kilos of water um, sitting in there and sloshing around, so that's placed right at the lowest part of the chassis to give the trailer the lowest centre of gravity. So that's about going to wrap up um, the chassis section. Uh, I think the next section that we'll get into now, um, let's have a talk about the storage inside the Patriot Campus X1. Storage is one of the biggest considerations that anybody who goes camping, anybody who's into camping in any style or format, whether it's camper trailers, caravans, or you're living out the back of your truck, storage is key, uh, well, one of the main keys to having a good time when you're out on a trip camping. Now, you'll notice specifically in the back of the Patriot X1, there is a massive storage area that was purpose, uh, purposefully designed into the X1 to have the ability to house all of the gear that typically you have nowhere for. Now, if you take it back to that 2013 design phase, uh, monocrystallite or folding solar panels weren't really a thing. They were around, but they were very, very expensive. So everybody was carrying big glass panels and I was doing the same big bulky uh, camp chairs. When you're traveling with kids, you know, benches and all that sort of stuff. And even for me, the camper trailers that I had previously prior to designing uh, the Patriot X1, there's no way that you could physically put in a, a, you know, like a standard one meter long or 700 long camp chair. So that back storage area is specific to those large bulky items. And we've designed all of the storage areas inside the Patriot, of X1, uh, Patriot X1 for a specific job. So, Tommy, mate, let's run around. Where are you going to start? Yeah, thanks, Justin. I'm going to start at the back, okay? I'm going to start that rear storage that you were talking about just then. And realistically, the main reason people are looking for a camper trailer is because they don't want to play Tetris in the back of the car anymore. They want something that can be towed away nice and easy with everything in it. So, this compartment here is the best part of the trailer. Because when we open it up, and let's get up and then and have a look in there, chairs, tables, porter cots, um, bunk beds, all that big bulky items that you just don't know where to put, that's where they go. Okay, so they're all totally out of the way. That may set up camp easier um, and loading up your trailer a lot easier as well. But also, under there, you've got a nice large rear drawer. <clears throat> Sorry about the background noise there. Um, so, you've got, um, you've got all your storage in here. Now, we supply you with all of this gear, so you could pretty much pick up a camper and go. But all of this will go to your sort of front going box and your shower cavity, and then this is going to be used for mainly your pots and pans and dry food storage. Look, it's, it's full to the brim. Now, let's just take some of this out here because I just want to show you the really great features that basically include your, um, these separators. So, what you would do is you would move them here, okay, and you'd line them up in there, and that's where you put your eggs, your bread, to stop them getting squashed. They're not going to move around. You've got three on one side, you've got three for the other, and you can really compartmentize your pantry, okay? So that's how we, we generally use it, but that's how I use it. Um, each to their own, though, obviously. Um, on the side here, you've got a nice little peg holder. Again, you can use it for what you like. I use it for a small roll of tools, um, just specifically for the trailer. Then you've got your, pay, your pole storage for your um, awnings and your tents and things like that that you need. And also if we have a look, um, you've got a really nice little table there. And that's great for a little picnic uh, if you're just stopping for a quick lunch. Um, also if we're looking at the back, <coughs> some other really handy features of your storage are the wet storage boxes. They are huge. Okay, so 
all your, look at that, half my, my whole arm goes in there, but floor mats, um, pegs, um, recovery gear, muddy boots, buckets and spades, that sort of stuff all goes in these, and then one on both sides, one there, and one there, and these really cool floor mats go in there too. So, Tommy, I might, uh, I might jump in on you there, mate. Yes, I can mate. feel a bit of a heritage moment coming up there Ooh. with those wet boxes. Ooh. So this, this design, that was really cute. This design <laughs> here, the wet boxes. I'll tell you the story behind the wet boxes and where they all came about. When we developed the first Patriot X1, if you go back through and have a look at the heritage page on the website, you'll notice that the wet boxes were never there. That was always intended to be a step to access the top of your trailer. Uh, Sarah and I were uh, camping at our, one of our favourite spots, Trad, uh, Stradbroke Island. Uh, it was raining, we were packing up, we'd been there for about three or four days. The kids were quite young then, the twins would have been about 10 years old. Uh, me was a few years younger than that. And I can vividly remember Sarah up on the back of the Land Cruiser, stripping off, you know, one of, uh, it was Mia actually, stripping off Mia, getting all the wet clothes off her because she didn't want her to get back into the truck covered in wet um, wet clothes covered in sand and fish bait from fish in the morning and, and all the rest of it. And it was actually one of my buddies, Maddie, he turned around and he said to me, man, why don't you utilise that area there and turn that into an area where you can put gear that you don't want to put back inside your trailer or back inside the truck. And that's where the wet boxes come from. And now, um, anybody who owns an X1, anybody who's experienced, you know, the use of those wet boxes there, you know, for things like bait, rubbish, muddy boots, recovery gear, all of that stuff that you consume when you're on a camping trip, that is the perfect spot for it. Justin, thank you for that little bit of heritage. I always love hearing the stories of where it all comes from. Um, come with me, guys, because I'm going to show you inside the trailer where you're typically going to put, you know, your clothes and things like that. So access while you're inside the trailer. We sort of saw with the X1N, Last week that, you know, you could have access throughout, but obviously with a tent comes off the side, you want to be able to access those storage parts as well. So let's come in here. I'm just going to push the bed away um, to have access to that so we can stand up properly and see what's going on. <clears throat> You've got these really great um, zipper compartments so you can lock it up um, at night time, stop any bugs getting in. But there's one big storage Tom, area. just while you're doing that, mate, before you undo that latch, um, let's have a talk about those, those latches. Um, can you lock them? Yes, you can lock them, Justin. <laughs> so um, you can put a padlock through there, and that's going to stop anyone sort of being able to open them. And obviously, and I'll show you when we get around the other side, but the doors here, in fact, we could probably come just out this way. Um, there's a, if we come through here, Mr. Cameraman... Uh, you've got a compression lock here, okay, and they're key lockable, okay, so one for your fridge and one for this side here. Awesome, mate, thanks for that, because um, that's a question that does come up pretty often, and let's just show the operation of those latches for people that uh, don't understand them. They've got a little anti-vibration clip right on the bottom of the latch, and what that does is, over corrugations or, you know, vibration sort of style roads, it's going to prevent uh, those latches from opening on their own. No worries. Shall I demonstrate that, Justin? Yeah, that'd be good, mate. So let's, okay. um, let's give everyone a close look up in there. So that's how they go in, but there's your, just a push button there and you just sort of slide it up and then down it comes. Really awesome, easy to use. Um, and look, once you get the hang of them, they're just, it's, yeah, it's like they're not even there. Um, Thanks, so, Tom. All good? Thank you. No problem. <laughs> so we'll go in here now, so again, this is where your main storage is for all your clothes. So you can buy these sort of from your Patriot Supply gear. Um, we store, everyone sort of has a bag. Um, fill up the bag. If it doesn't come in the bag, it doesn't come with you. Uh, that way, you know, everyone has one. And then rather than having bags all over the floor, um, you know, tripping over at night time, they're neatly packed away and they're really, really easy to load when you're going on a trip. Um, you also see a charging shelf here, okay? Or you can use it for a toiletry shelf. Um, and some more storage under there. Um, but the massive storage as well, and I always struggle to know what to put in here um, with my camper trailer. I'm generally going, well, I've still got more storage to go. But if you look in there, um, come through here, there's even more storage. So again, you could do more clothes in there, you could do a porta potty. Now we do an additional slide that slides out so you have better access uh, to heavier items. You might want to put a generator in there and that sort of stuff. With another shelf on top, Again, more storage. 
You could do a solar blanket up there, your floor mats, hoses, whatever you sort of choose. But, but they are, oh, the, the storage is endless, you know, on these. That so. area specifically there, that shelf that you see above the, um, that little shelf in there that they're showing on the screen right now, again, that was specifically designed for a camp oven. We used to do a lot of cooking in, the, in a Dutch oven or a camp um, oven in a cast iron one. We now carry a spun steel one that lives in a different location. But still every now and again, when we take the original Patriot X1 away, that's where our cast iron camp oven lives. Another one of those items that is very, very difficult to pack. You're always trying to find a place for it. And that's where all, uh, that came about. We might just wrap up on the storage there, Tommy, because we're, we're, we're running a little bit ahead of time, uh, behind time at the moment, sorry. So we might just give, give them a quick look in that left-hand storage box. If we can pan that um, camera left and have a look at really show that full size of the space inside there. That probably wraps up your free storage. We'll, um, Tommy, we'll pick up on the man cave and the kitchen storage um, when we get into the kitchen area, yeah? I think that's a good idea, mate. Let's do that. All right, fantastic. So that being said, um, let's have a look at the, the best part. Well, not the best part. I think some people would consider it the best part. One of the top three best parts of the Patriot X1, the kitchen area. The kitchen area in the Patriot X1, there's an old saying that goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's one of the areas of the, the, the X1 that we haven't put a lot of work into. Sure, it's been refined over the years and we've made some, some small adjustments and additions. Biggest addition would be uh, the biggest sink that we uh, brought in, I think, 2017 models, uh, 2018 models to be able to put in uh, the bigger um, plates. We also now have plumbed hot water on all models um, to the sink. You'll need to connect the gas hot water system. There's one connection straight into the bottom of it, but you get hot water there. If you get the Wabasto option, um, you've got hot water on demand all the time. The kitchen was a lot of, a lot of the, the kitchen features uh, attributed really to Sarah, my wife. She was heavily involved in the design of the X1 kitchen to really try and maximise that space and being able to cater to a large family. And not just specifically my family of five. When we go camping, we're very rarely on our own. We're always with very close uh, family. Kids, cousins are always there. So to accommodate those large family meals and the get togethers, um, which is the biggest part of camping for us and our family, as you would see through Patriot Games, that's where all of the design cues come from. So I'll flick back over to Tom and uh, Tom, let's, um, let's have a run through um, the kitchen. And mate, let's talk about, you've got something pretty exciting, brand new in that kitchen I can see in frame sitting right beside you. I, I really think, this is not a, a Dometic virtual show, but I think <laughs> that product is definitely worthy of showing these people through uh, what's inside that fridge. Okay, no problem. I was going to go straight to that, but I will as you prompted it. Yeah, the, the CFX3 uh, 55 uh, litre Dometic fridge. I mean, I haven't had a full chance to use it yet, but from the, you know, using a Waco uh, 50 litre before, you know, these things are fantastic. Look, they're the same size, okay, as a 50 litre, um, but what they do, they've, they've um, made the compressor slightly smaller, um, which allows more storage inside. And one of the coolest features with this, because I know what me and Justin like, we like to have a couple of whiskies of an evening, and they've got a little ice maker inside. And look, I think that is perfect. Uh, when you're away and you just want to have a nice nightcap, um, with, with a bit of ice, perfect. Um, and my kids love ice as well, so um, it's really good to keep them entertained. But that fridge is massive, okay? Uh, and fits perfectly on that slide. We also do a 60 litre Evercool, which is a dual zone, so it's a fridge freezer combination. Uh, again, really, really popular. I suppose the big difference there is the compressor on the Evercool sits on the back of the uh, fridge, okay? So you can actually lift the lid all the way up and you've got large storage inside, which gives you that extra bit. But look, guys, it's uh, fridge is your preference and you can choose either of those um, when you're using the trailer. Um, but I must mention, we always recommend two fridges, one in the car and, and one on the trailer as well. We'll scan just down here into here, uh, which is your plate storage and your wet sponge storage. Now, these are really great places to, to keep all that, but when you finish washing up, 
you can put your little washing wand in there, um, and that's a great place to keep it. Um, obviously, it's one of those things that you don't know where to put. Um, there's your cutlery drawer. Now, some people can put little separators in there, um, but otherwise, you throw your cutlery in there, and that's where it sort of stays. Moving to the larger sink. So, yeah, through the years, we have made a few changes, and I think this is, for the kitchen, uh, one of the best features. You get a full-size plate in there, um, and get some serious washing up done. Um, and Justin, I think I was your, the, the dishy on a lot of the trips, so I know how to use these sinks. Um, sorry, sorry, Tom, what, what was that? Who was the dishy? I was the dishy. Oh, okay. You oh. weren't the dishy, you were the chef. Every, every, look, everybody's got a job. <laughs> look, I'll put my hand up for that, and look, happy to be on those trips, so I'll do your dishes, mate. Um, okay, so your large sink, you've got hot and cold tap. Um, there, so you can plumb into your, your gas, or if you get the diesel hot water system, um, you can get uh, it's already plumbed up, ready to go. There's a drainage hose that we put on the bottom, supply you with, so you can run your water away from the trailer um, and your campground. And there's a stabiliser that you can also put on just to give a little bit more stability, especially when you camped out for a few days and uh, everyone's sort of rolling around a little bit merry. Um, <clears throat> we'll go to, you know, what I consider, you know, your, the hub of the camper trailer um, is your main kitchen bench with all your little drawer systems. Now this was another great feature we changed throughout the, the years is making these rather than shelves, we made them into drawers uh, with these little locking features. Great for your cups, your mugs, um, you know, uh, that sort of stuff. This one here is salts, peppers, teas, coffees, oils, all that stuff that you use all the time. And then this one here, your long uh, your long utensils, uh, sharp knives and stuff to keep them away from the children. The kitchen won't be complete without its cooking facilities. So you've got a two burner stove, okay, with a grill plate, uh, and you can adjust all that there. Um, and it's totally removable. So that is your kitchen, but obviously not forgetting in the man cave, now I, I know this trailer doesn't have a barbecue swing away, but I'm sure we have a clip of a barbecue swing away somewhere. Um, but you can sort of see a touch on that storage as well. You can get 26, 20 litre jerry cans across the front of there. And there's another great shelf uh, that's an option that you can add um, straps and hoses and that sort of stuff there. But typically your barbecue swing away sits in there and adds to your cooking. Probably a pretty good point there, Tom, because um, I think that's something that gets a little bit, uh, little bit lost or overlooked. That actual front box, that man cave was designed specifically to hold six 20 litre jerry cans. Now, if you go back to the original uh, Patriot X1, the first production model in 2014, it only had 70 litres of water capacity. Uh, at that time, when the kids were a little bit younger, we were predominantly doing weekend trips. So 70 litres was sufficient amount of water, but we wanted the ability to be able to carry fuel and water, uh, fuel for the boats, and additional water if we were going on longer trips. And that's why the shape of that man cave is specifically the shape it is. Another one, if we just close that lid, Tom, um, let's have a quick talk about the, uh, the stone deflection on that. We're probably getting away from the kitchen section, um, <laughs> but whilst you're there, it's probably worth having a quick chat about that too. Yeah, so you'll notice that um, you know, the front of the Patriots, they're all sort of rhino coats in this black protective um, sealant. Now that's sort of rubber, it's got a rubber feel about it. So it's gonna deflect any stones that are coming back off here, but it's, it's angled down, okay? So that when a rock does come up, it's not gonna hit and fly into your back windscreen. It's just gonna go straight back down to the floor. Um, so the rhino coating protects the front of your trailer um, and look, does an awesome job um, protecting your investment. All right, so Tommy, look, what we might do is, mate, can we, um, can you see if you can get your, uh, your camera guy there to give us a full wide from that back three quarters? Let's have a talk about the, the actual size of the kitchen and the awning that sits above it um, as your main sort of entertaining uh, area. That's it, that looks, um, that, that looks really good. So Tom, let's, let's get you in the centre there, mate. Okay, I'll, I'll jump in here. So you can see, look, you can see there that the size of the awning, and let's, let's have a quick chat about the awning in that main area. Look, the, the awning, again, just, it's, it's one of the most important parts of the trailer for giving you that shade. What I love about the awning is that when you pull up for a quick lunchtime stop, you can just open the awning up. You don't have to fold all the tent out, get the bed out or anything like that. Two and a half minutes, you'll get this thing out and you'll have full shade while you're having lunch or doing a dinner or a quick roadside stop, however you want to do it. They're really good without having to get the whole trailer out. I think that's, that's one of the key features there. Tommy, the you trailer. got me there? Can you hear me? 
Yes, mate. What, what did you just say? Two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes, I reckon. Can you set up one in two and a half minutes? Look, now I reckon I can do it in probably two minutes. Yep. Um, back of the day, it was probably about two minutes 40. Oh, I, heard, oh, I heard a rumour. Oh, I heard this rumour that, um, that I was quicker at setting up an awning than you are. Is that the truth? Or? I think in the early days, mate, you probably were. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, with a few years on now, I reckon I can still do it. Well, <laughs> look... I don't, I don't, look, I'm not one to boast. I'm definitely not one to brag. <laughs> really? Well, maybe I am. <laughs> but I reckon I've got that clip. Let's roll the clip of Tommy and I racing at Fraser Island to set up the Patriot awning. <laughs> I think there was a definitive winner there, Tom. Look, mate, I think, uh, you know, the X2 on him slightly different. Hadn't done it as much, so that, that's kind of my excuse anyway. All right, well, look, the, the best way, um, I might have said it last week, the best way to not lose is not compete. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that title. <laughs> I think it was a one-off opportunity for you. And uh, I'm going to remain the champion of setting up the Patriot awning. You can do that, mate. You can do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, I think that probably... Um, that probably just about wraps up um, the awning section. We might touch back on it a, a little bit later on. Uh, worthwhile noting, uh, the Patriot X1 awning is a locally made Australian made product. Uh, it's a product that we've been running for a very long time. At this point in time, the Hexacore awning that is on the X3, and we're getting this question a lot, is not available on the X1. Uh, we're gonna remain uh, with the current awning that we have. It works, like I said before, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's currently where we're at. But what we're going to do tonight is, um, look, we're going to have a little bit of a break. We're going to have a quick couple of minute break. Uh, and I want to talk to the people who, who don't know or are not a, aware of our series, Patriot Games. Now, Patriot Games is a lifestyle series uh, on another YouTube channel um, that runs all of the Patriot campers gear. It's based around uh, myself, my wife and my kids and my extended family and what Patriot Campers is all about, the lifestyle that we promote we practice what we preach. You know, these camper trailers have taken our family to the ends of the earth. Our current series, Series, uh, series 3, um, is airing. We're at the tail end of our Mongolia expedition, um, which was an absolutely amazing experience at the business. And more specifically, the products have given us the ability uh, to conquer some of these dreams. So we'll have a quick break. And whilst we do, uh, we're going to run for you the trailer, the Series 3 trailer of Patriot Games. Enjoy this uh, quick break.
still get goosebumps uh, watching that back. You know, the, the soundtrack, the um, just it brings back all of that emotion from all of the trips uh, that these camper trailers, these products, you know, products that we produce have um, have, have enabled us to do. So for us, you know, you know, Patriot Campers, it is a it's a passion project. It still is. It always was from day number one, and I think it shines through the design. Uh, another extreme thing that we're proud of here at Patriot Campers is obviously the fact that we've remained Australian made. Uh, Australian manufacturing's been through some pretty hard times in the past sort of five to ten years, and uh, we couldn't be prouder to be uh, manufacturing here in Australia and representing the brand, the country, and the people uh, right around the world uh, through our distribution chains. So. That was a good little break, got to have some water. I think we're going to get into the next section now of the uh, Patriot X1. And probably, I'd say this is part of the trailer that really sets it apart from all of the other products um, that we've always produced and even what we produce today. It is still our number one seller, the Patriot X1, and everything changed for us, everything changed for us when we integrated the tent on the X1 series. So let's get into the accommodation of the Patriot Campers X1. The X1 started off um, as a project uh, of a camper trailer without a rooftop tent. So the original concept was for customers to be enabled to put on whatever tent that they wanted. And when we designed the first X1, we actually designed it for a hard shell uh, tent, which I used to utilise a lot when I was going out hunting with the boys and using the trailer for those purposes. But I quickly found out that with the family and taking the entire family with us, all five of us, that there just wasn't enough room. So we started off with a couple of different uh, bolt-on tents and really high quality stuff. Um, and through, through the, the ages or you know, using the trailer and, and travelling, um, we decided it just wasn't enough for us and we thought that we could do a lot better. So we've developed our own series of canvas tents, Australian canvas manufactured right here in Australia. Um, and we've called them the CS3 range of tents. And CS3 actually stands for Camp Setup Three Minutes. It's a three minute job to open and close uh, the Patriot X1. And I'll probably touch on another fundamental of the design. The whole X1 design is modular. If you're pulling up late at night and you know, the guys that are, that are online now, and I can see a couple of our, um, couple of our uh, customers commenting, they'll, I know they'll second me on this. If you're pulling up late at night, you've banked a lot of Ks, you pull up at, you know, very late at night, you just want to go to bed, three minutes, you fold the tent over, open the mattress, everybody jumps into bed, you're done. If you pull up somewhere for lunch and you're going to spend an hour at a fishing spot or a couple of hours, you can just put the awning up. If you're going on an extended stay, then you can put out all of the awning sails and add all of that additional canvas that you need. So that was a fundamental of the design and something that really resonates with a lot of people when they come into the showroom and it actually clicks for them. Oh, I don't have to set up the awning or I don't have to do this or to access the kitchen, I don't have to set up my whole camper trailer. So that's a big consideration if you're looking at, uh, at a Patriot X1. Tom, uh, you got me there? Hey, I got you. There you go, you can see the tent right behind you and still, um, mate, it is a good looking bit of kit, isn't it? Look, I love the colour of the canvas uh, and I love the feel of the whole thing and, and obviously the, the ease of use. So mm. look, let's, let's go inside, eh? All right, let's uh, state before you get in there, guys, we are on a concrete floor in here. Nothing's really pegged down the way that it should be. You can see we've got a frame sitting around the kids' room uh, down there. Um, so the canvas is probably not in its optimum uh, sort of set up as far as, you know, stretch and pulled nice and tight. Um, but let's have a run through, Tommy. Come on inside, guys, because obviously once you get in here, um, you know, you start to see the space. And look, you've got a large bed up the top there. It's not quite a king, but bigger than a queen. Um, it's going to suit, you know, mum, dad, and even the little one who climbs up in the middle of the night. Um, it's an inner spring gel top mattress on here. So it's very, very comfortable. And you've got these large windows for massive airflow. And being up high, you're going to catch that airflow, um, the nice cool breeze during the summer months. There's two charging ports in the corner um, that you can actually you know, get a fan to, charge your phone at night. And you've got these two bedside pockets, so phone, wallet, keys, that sort of stuff in there as well. It's a really, really nice feature, but I think the best one, and I'm standing right next to it, is the staircase. There is no easier bed to get up on top of 
than using this staircase. You've got a grab rail here. The steps are nice and wide, really nice on your feet, okay? If you ever use a ladder on bare feet, it's, it's really bad, it really hurts your feet. But this, nice and easy, in the middle of the night you can get up, no problems, uh, really, really easy to use. If you come on here, obviously you're bringing some kids with you, um, with the kids tent, you've got two, but there's two um, beds in here, stretches, you could do a bar mattress, you can do um, self-inflating mattresses, you've got little pockets on the corner there, now they open up as little windows for airflow as well through the trailer, you've got another one at the end, you've got a really cool little Velcro hook there so you can put a lantern for the kids to go to bed. Um, if you scan down to the bottom um, of the floor, you'll see that it's up, you can remove it. So if the kids have been in and out, you've dragged a lot of mud or sand, just unzip it, okay? Put it in your wet storage boxes and then zip it on at your next place after you've hosed it down. Another thing, now I'm 183 centimetres tall, about six foot, and I'm, and I'm in here fine. So your kids are sitting down here, plenty of space, okay? And it's the same with this floor, that unzips as well. And at night time, you can block them off um, by d putting this down, you know, if you're still up and about and they're in bed. So really, really great features there. Tom, you got me? Mate, yeah. let's, um, let's have a chat about um, setup times. I've actually got a clip here. Rather than just talk about it, let's show it. Uh, let's show it in real life. I've actually got a clip from the Fraser Island video as well. Let's roll that up and we'll show the setup of the main Patriot X110 and how long it actually takes. So you can see there, that's about three minutes and 20 seconds. What you'll notice is it actually takes more time to take the bag off than it does to set the tent up. And that's, it's still pretty ironic, isn't it, Tommy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it literally just Constantine is over. And, and Justin, I've never seen you run so quick, mate. Yeah, I know, <laughs> mate, I can, can move, I can move. And yes, that was speed ramped, but the time was not obviously speed ramped. Um, we've also got another clip here, which I'll show you real quick, but before I say that, another big part of the design of the kids' room, the kids' room is one singular pole. I don't know, can we get a shot of that pole? Ignore this bar here. This is purely <laughs> for while we're in the showroom, but it's just this pole here. Yep. Just locks in. Perfect. So that's all it is. So you zip on one end of the kids' room and you simply put in one pe peg, one guy rope, Let's, um, let's cut to that clip there of uh, putting the kids' room on. And there you have it. So there's the, um, the setup of the kids' room. Now, we're going to get into, in another, another series, keep an eye out for the virtual tour, we're going to get into the X1H, which is a, a, a different concept. Now, there's something to consider when you're buying a camper trailer. If you, uh, the, and the number one question that we ask or we use to, to talk to people uh, that are considering or don't really know they haven't been camping before, camping is a lifestyle. It's not all about, it's not caravanning. Caravanning is a different thing. If you're looking for a product where you physically pull up, get out the car, open the door and sit in your air conditioning, then a camper trailer is definitely not gonna be for you and we've, we've been down this path before. So for setup, yes, setup times are very important. They're very important depending on the style of traveling that you're doing. If you're in touring mode and you're trying to bank K's to get to a destination in a period of time, all of this matters. If you're going out for a weekend and you enjoy camping and you enjoy tinkering around camp, which is really what you do when you go to a campsite, you know, when you're playing with guy ropes and pegs and all the rest of it, you still have the ability to, to do that with a Patriot X1. We don't, we, we often, you know, people, you know, come here and they say to us, oh, but I, I want to have the experience of setting up a campsite and packing down a campsite. And this is what camping is all about. We manufacture camper trailers. We don't manufacture caravans. And the canvas, it, it needs time and it needs a little bit of love 
um, when you're out camping and it does need that constant adjustment and that's all part and parcel uh, of the, the romance, I suppose, of getting out there and going camping. Would you agree with that, Tommy? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, mate, it's a camping trailer and most people who buy one of our products want the camping experience. Uh, and look, those, those videos, I mean, show you how quick it was. But when you leave it all attached and then you pack it down, it's, 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 it's quicker again. Well, that's, that's a valid point, Tommy. Explain that to people that probably don't understand. Yeah, so in the video you were seeing him zip on the other kids' room. But if you know you're using that kids' room all the time, you've got your family, you're traveling all the time, just leave it attached. So as you pull it out, this is all still there. You just bring it out, one pole bang, put your pegs in, you're done. There is no zipping at all. And you can leave it like that until the kids start to move out and get into swags. Then you can unzip that and then mum and dad have just got their tent there, the kids have got theirs. So it's, it's going to evolve as your camping evolves. So you can really, you know, it's, they're amazing. They really are, guys. And that's why it's our number one seller. All right, mate, let's, um, let's jump inside. Let's continue, um, let's continue inside there. Um, <laughs> let's have a talk about the, um, the bedding area, mate. Yeah, well, I sort of touched on it before, um, but I'm going to show you now. It's an 100 mil inner spring gel top mattress. And the underneath is like an anti-condensation sort of area. So, you know, being a camping, you know, you would experience that sort of stuff. But this is going to help with any of that. Uh, with the metal base there, but I'm going to get up because I always say it to people, there is nothing like waking up in a Patriot Campers X1. When you wake up, I'm just going to show you, you sort of wake up in the morning, you sort of look around through the big window and all you can see, especially if you're at the beach, is the beach lapping at the shores. It's, it's amazing. Um, and what I'm lying on here is definitely a necessity for your camper trailer. Um, isn't it, Justin? What was that? Sorry, mate, I missed that. I said what I'm laying on now is a real necessity for Ooh, your camper that, trailer. That, that was my cue. Okay, that was so your guys, <laughs> tonight I am bringing in a special guest. And this special guest you're all very, very familiar uh, with. Um, she is the queen of Patriot Campers. And we're going to introduce a brand new section called Patriot Supply with Sarah. How you doing there, babe? Hey, really well. How are you? Good. So, um, welcome to the show. Welcome to the Patriot Virtual Show. Are you going to make a regular appearance on this show from now on? Maybe. We'll have to see. If you keep bringing in the Patriot Supply products, I'll be here. Well, look, for the people who don't know, Sarah is the brains behind all of Patriot Supply. So, all of the Patriot Supply products, uh, all the apparel that we sell, uh, the apparel for Patriot Games, all of the products that we utilise, uh, here at Patriot Campers um, is all Sarah's little baby. So, what are you going to run us through tonight? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. Pretty obvious. Give so us a run through. It's the Patriot Campers minus five sleeping bag. So, this is something we put a lot of love into over the years using so many different sleeping bags and being able to combine all of the things that we love into one and this is it. So, You've got a really loose fitting bag, which is awesome. You just fold it up. If it's in any compartment in your trailer, or you can throw it in your vehicle. Really, really easy to put anywhere, not having to shove it in the bag. Um, you've got eight ounce canvas is your outer shell. And on your inner, you have got 100% um, cotton, which is really important. It's um, comfortable, doesn't make you sweat. Uh, you've also got a drawstring here. So if you're cold, you can pull yourself in. You can also let your feet out the end. And what's the best fit? Babe, what's your best feature? My, my favourite feature? Your favourite. Of the, the sleeping bag? Yeah. Well, I don't know, are there kids watching? Yeah, no, 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 keep it, it clean. It's, it's when you and I are asleep in the sleeping bag together, babe. Okay, back to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, my, my number one feature of the, um, of the sleeping bag is the fact that you can zip two of them together. I, I really, really actually like that. Generally speaking, we run ours just as a donor in our camper trailer, don't yeah. we babe? We don't really use it as a sleeping bag, but on when it's really cold, um, you zip the two of them together and it's just, it's amazing. Yeah, 100%. That's how we run it in our camper trailer. The kids run them as singles, but they are quite big. So if you open it up, it's a queen size, 
or you can zip them together as Justin said, or the kids use them on their own, um, but they are really big. So one meter by two meters, um, canvas, YKK zips, really good quality. I know they're running short on time, but $1.99 on patriotsupply.com.au, uh, check these babies out. Cool. All right, so thank you very much, Sarah, for uh, presenting that sleeping bag. A couple of things that I'll add um, to that, that sleeping bag there. I utilise that sleeping bag in two different uh, scenarios. We either utilise it in the camper trailer uh, when we're going away together, and like I said, you unzip it and it opens up like a doona. It's cotton fleece. They are a minus five. They're amazing, really, in every condition here in Australia. We've used them in the winter um, out in the desert when we're out travelling at Fink, and we still use them when we go up north, although you might not sleep underneath them. The second use that I have for that Patriot sleeping bag is I run the Darchi Dust, uh, Dust to Dawn 900 millimetre wide swag. So I don't run a 12 or a 1500 mil swag. I like being in the cocoon um, of my swag and the sleeping bag still fits perf uh, perfectly inside of that swag. So there was a couple of design uh, criteria that came from me when it came to, um, to coming up with that product. So there are a few more products from Patriot Supply that we will be presenting uh, throughout other shows. And everybody asked last, uh, last week or last episode, where Sarah, why wasn't she involved? And now you're gonna be seeing Sarah in every single episode, which I'm um, really excited about. Tommy, have we still got you there, mate? You've definitely still got me. How, yeah. how did she done well, huh? Oh, she's done very, very well. Amazing. So, mate, where do we, uh, what have we missed with the accommodation? Yeah, I think look, we should probably, the last thing we should really talk about is the power inside the tent. Um, the, the, maybe the 12 volt, we'll talk about the tent heating. That's a big one for, especially for our US and our, our Melbourne, Victoria people. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the, with, um, with the Patriot, you've got uh, two forms of sort of, uh, of water, hot water. So you've got one, the gas hot water system is standard. And then you can option for the diesel or Basto hot water system. And that um, not only gives you hot water, but it gives you heating inside the tent. So let's go back, back inside. And if you can, sorry, Mr. With the cameraman, if you can get up in here, there's a vent just to the side. Get on that ladder, mate. There's a vent just down here, and you've got a two-speed switch here, okay, um, that basically brings the hot air into it. Now, the diesel, you can op operate as timers. So, you know, if it's getting cold, that 2.30 in the morning, set a timer, it will come on, start heating up the tent. It's a really, really nice feature. Um, so, it's... Look, if, you, if it's uh, in the budget, you definitely get it. Then you've got your little uh, lighting switches here, um, which can be dimmed for a bit of mood lighting. Okay, and, and uh, open up as well, obviously, if you've got the kids in here, um, or if you've got to get up in the middle of the night. Um, and also, we spoke about power. I feel like everyone's really in my bed here. Um, you've got a USB port there, can you see that there? And a 12 volt, okay. Um, just in the corner, so you can charge your phone at night. Again, like I said, you can put um, portable fans up um, in the summer if you do want a little bit of extra uh, breeze. Um, and plenty of space. So next to you there, you can put a bottle of water uh, either side. So th there's so much space up here, and you know you can easily get. Look, I'm again, I'm six foot, and that's that's really nice. All right, Tommy, I think we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> leave you there, then, mate. You have a quick little nap. Um, and I might talk about uh, where we're heading next, um, which is going to be in the services. Let's have a talk about power and water. So there's two things that are gonna keep you off the grid, yeah? Three things that are gonna keep you off the grid. Number one is a reliable product that's gonna get you out there and get you back, first and foremost. Number two is going to be water. Number three is going to be power, and predominantly for power, it's food, yeah? You need to keep your fridge cold um, so you ensure that you've got enough to keep you out on the trip that you're currently on. So, the X1 is now running at 155 litres uh, of water and it comes with two 130 or 150 amp hour uh, gel batteries now, which are upgradable to lithium. We are gonna do a lithium video down the track, 
um, and we'll explain some of the differences between uh, lithium batteries and AGMs or any other sort of deep cycle uh, batteries. Uh, but that's a whole nother conversation. Uh, Tommy, I think what we'll do is we'll start, the X1 that we're presenting to you guys uh, tonight has the tech pack included and the tech pack includes Redux TVMS. So what we might do, Tom, let's have a talk about the TVMS and then I might jump in and explain the difference between the, uh, the standard package and the tech pack. Okay, thanks Justin. So we'll stand here, this, you know, this is your main electrical component there, which is the Red Vision uh, from Red Arc. Now this basically houses all of your um, sw light switches, um, water tanks, battery, all that sort of stuff in one sort of view interface there. So you can turn lights on and off in here. Um, you can sort of see what your batteries are doing, where the power is coming from, whether it's 240 solar or off your vehicle. See what your water level um, gauges are doing. And there's some really great features here where you can see what your solar was like throughout the day um, and, and other features. Another really cool thing, I haven't got it on my phone, um, you have Bluetooth. So you could be up inside the bed um, and you want to turn all the lights off, you just jump on your phone, just boom, without having to go, okay, lights off. Let's all go around in, and into bed, uh, and that's a really cool feature. And um, you can just see what everything's going on. You'll be sitting by the campfire, see what you know, see what battery power you got there as well. So also with the tech pack, uh, I know you quickly mentioned it, but around the other side, and um, after we're live, you can scroll back and have a look. You'll see where that charging shelf was. There's a thousand watt inverter. Um, we find that a thousand watts of power for a camping trip is ample. You can pretty much do everything that you want to do with it. If you want to run toasters, hair straighteners, coffee machines, you probably need to upgrade that to about a 2000 watt inverter, but then you need to have the battery power to be able to power that. And we would suggest uh, two lithium batteries to do that. Now, what we might do is let's just, um, we've got a, a comparison uh, image up there between the TVMS and BMS. There we go. So you can see there on your screen there on the left hand side, in a standard configuration Patriot X1, i.e. without the tech pack option, that is the setup that you'll get. You'll get the Red Arc Manager 30 and the, the standard Manager 30 display screen, and then you'll get a series of rocker switches, and behind those rocker switches are the fuses. You won't have the Bluetooth uh, compatibility. Um, you don't have the accessibility to um, the water level gauge and the soft key functionality on the TVMS. It does get a lot more complicated than that behind the scenes, but that's probably, this is probably not the forum for it. The TVMS from a tech, uh, technology point of view and installation point of view is a much, much more uh, complex system. But the complexity in the TVMS generates the reliability and that's, I can't really go into it much further than that or we're gonna end up with another one hour uh, video here. <laughs> but fundamentally, whether you get the tech pack or not, there is still a BMS, there is still a Manager 30 inside your X1. The TVMS is the brain system that's controlling that Bluetooth um, compatibility and all of the switching fundamentally. Um, so also with the tech pack, it's worth mentioning that you do get airbags included with the tech pack because that electrical system is all built in uh, to that wiring harness. That's about it for electrics, Tom. Do you want to quickly touch on water, mate, and then we'll, um, we'll move along to the next section? Absolutely, mate. Yeah, so yeah, 155 litres of water um, in your water tanks, okay, and they have a pressurised water pump on board, okay, so whenever you want to use your, your water, you turn the water pump on, and as soon as you pull the tap, boom, out it comes. Now, there's, there's a couple of water outlets. You've got one there at your sink, and then you've got another one here uh, just on the drawbar there. So if you finish hitching up, you can turn that on, wash your hands, and, and get back in the car, wash your feet off. Um, but that's how you're going to connect straight to your gas hot water system. Now, I spoke about it before. You've got a uh, gas hot water system is standard. Come around this way so you can get a good look at that. Um, so you just plug your gas in, plug your water into the tank, and then, yeah, run a little shower tent basically about here, um, and away you go. So that's your standard feature. Otherwise, you go for a diesel hot water system, um, which basically gives you plumped hot water everywhere, touch button, about 10 minutes it sort of starts up and you've got timers and things you can set for it. Really, really nice feature with a big family, okay? Because you get really good consistent hot water and of course the heating inside the tent, okay? So very popular in our southern states, really popular in the US um, and so yeah, it's, it's purely personal preference, guys. 
All um, right, Tommy, mate, thank you very much. That probably wraps up about that section there. Guys, I'm going to jump in and quickly apologise. We are having a couple of uh, tech issues here with uh, cameras freezing. I hope that's not too annoying for the people that are watching it uh, live. We'll try and uh, sort that out for the next episode. But what we're going to do now is we are going to take a very short break. We're going to take a 45 second break. Here's another message from one of our sponsors. To celebrate season three of Patriot Games, we're giving you the chance to win the ultimate family touring package worth over $150,000. Enter now to get your hands on a brand new Isuzu D-Max kitted out to handle a Patriot Games adventure using the gear we know and trust. And if that's not enough, you'll also receive a Patriot Campus X2 to tow behind it. Plus, receive a brand new Polaris Ranger for the kids and loads of camping gear. Entries close June 30, 2020. Enter online now at patriotgames.tv. Welcome back. I hope everybody enjoyed that competition. Who wants to win a D-Max? I want to win a D-Max. I would also <laughs> like to win a D-Max and the X2 and the Polaris Ranger. So make sure you get on board, enter that competition. Now we probably, um, I got Tommy back in here a little bit prematurely during that break. Rushed me in. I'm sorry about that, <laughs> but we, okay. are, we are well over time on, on this episode. Um, I forgot to mention or let you talk about the awning sales around the awning, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So one thing we um, need to add there is um, you can have, have additional sails that cover over the front drawbar, over the man cave, and over the rear door um, entrance to your trailer. So you've got 360 um, coverage over the trailer, so if it's raining outside and the weather's no good, you can walk all the way around um, and set up a really nice base camp. But make sure you check out the X1 product videos right throughout the year. Um, the current X1 product video is, uh, is an amazing, one of, one of our favourites. And I think, look, Tommy's favourite, obviously, and still one of my favourite videos that this company has ever produced was the Fraser, the oh. Fraser Island comparison video. Fraser Island. Oh, take, take me back. <laughs> take me so back. jump on the YouTube channel, have a look at the comparison video between the X1 and the X2 at Fraser Island. Amazing explanation there and an amazing weekend, wasn't it? Oh. And it was one of those adventures. So guys, we're going to get into the final section of the virtual show, uh, the Q&A. We do look like news reporters, eh? <laughs> That's the look I'm going for. <laughs> That's the look you got with those glasses and that haircut, dude. You I've nailed it. Yeah. I've nailed it. Ron, Excellent. Ron Burgundy. That's it. I think I've got the better look. I've got the stack of paper. All right, let's get into the Q&A. <laughs> let's have a, t uh, a look at the, the, the big questions that have come through um, throughout tonight's episode. Um, Ryan, Graham, uh, Mitch, Ames, and I, that's all I've really noticed. I've been glancing at it while I've trying to be focused on the show. Thank you very much uh, for answering all the questions that have come through. Uh, I think a lot of people want to hear a couple of those from the horses, the horses's the horses mouth, mouth yeah. um, which is us. So let's get into it. Uh, how much is the next one, Tom? X1 starts at 45.990. Okay. Um, and then the one we had there today, we had tech pack, lifestyle pack. Uh, on that one as well. So um, there's a few different options there, but they're 45,990 starting price, um, and then in the US, 34,990. Right. So there just shy $35,000 in the United States for the X1. Fundamentally, as we uh, presented tonight, without the tech pack and the uh, and the kids' room, which are a couple of options. Uh, what's the warranty on this? I'd love to answer this question. Five years. So we give a five-year structural warranty on all Patriot camper trailers um, on any of the structure any of the uh, supplied components, i.e. from any of the brand name stuff that is in the Patriot Campers, will be as per the manufacturer. I would also like to state, because something else I'm extremely proud of, in the five years, we have never had a structural warranty claim on a Patriot Camper chassis. Um, and it, that's just an amazing feat uh, for a company like ours, especially considering what we force or we promote our owners to do to with do. them. That's it. Take them out there, beat up on them, if I can't break one, no one can. Actually, I did break one in the upcoming series of Patriot Games, so you need to check that out. But there was a valid excuse for it. 
Will it take 35 inch tyres? Uh, I'll answer that one as well. Yes, uh, 35 inch tyres will fit. If you're in Australia, you need to also upgrade to a 12 inch brake. Uh, the rotational mass of a 35 inch tyres will not comply on 10 inch brakes. and uh, You need to go to a 35 inch brake. Uh, I'm thinking of an X1 or an X3 for UK and Europe. Would you recommend the Australian or US version as it's a lot wetter and colder here? That's an odd question because they're identical. Yeah, exactly right. They're identical. And, and look, if you are in Europe um, or UK, look, you will be getting the Australian um, spec model. Okay, yep. so we don't have a spec for that over there, but uh, you will be getting Australian spec. Yeah, fundamentally, the only differences between the United States and the Australian trailers is the power system. So the United States has a 110 volt uh, wiring harness and all 110 volt gear. There are some other small changes, but I'm just talking about the major standout one and 240 volt for Australia. Are, the baffle, are there baffles in the water tanks uh, to reduce momentum and increase stability? No, there's not. Uh, the water tanks are actually quite slim. They're an eight mil wall uh, material, but the actual volume of water in the water tanks, it's not like they're very high. And because there's twin water tanks, that water is separated between those two tanks. They're also very narrow. So there's not a lot of momentum in that water volume that sits inside of those tanks. Um, how come you never talk about the white LEDs on the side of the trailer? How come you never talk about the little white LEDs on the side of the trailer? Oh. Oh, the, the front uh, indicator lamps, if that's what you're referring to, if the, the, the two little uh, white 20 mil ones, uh, they're an Australian compliance regulation. We have to install them uh, on the trailer. Um, can you make something under $20,000 but can be added to? It's, it's, it comes up quite frequently. Short answer, yes. Yes, we can. We could produce a camper trailer for $10,000, maybe, possibly less. Would it be a camper trailer that I would buy? No way. So it's not a camper trailer that I would sell to my customers. Um, there is, there is, it is possible that there might be in the future, there might be another model that comes out that might be more affordable that somebody can build onto. <coughs> But we found as a business where we started with Patriot Campers, that was the concept, um, but people demanded more and more and more. So we've wound up with the features that we see our customers want. And we put the best gear in them, you know? And that's what we, we put by. Like. Well, look, we put the best of the best into the camper trailers and that's why they sit at the price point um, that they're at. Um, Wondering how the water system, this is all very technical. Oh, yeah, I'm loving Isn't it. Isn't it? Yeah. Very technical. I'm learning, I'm learning. <laughs> Wondering how the water system, plumbing, pipes, uh, pumps, etc., went in the cold when you guys were in Mongolia. In addition to the water system, how did the battery system go in the cold in Mongolia? Was there any noticeable difference in how quickly the batteries discharged? Really, really good questions. In Mongolia, no. It, did, it actually, look, it was, it was cold in Mongolia, but it wasn't like some of the extreme, it wasn't extreme Mongolia. Mongolia can get to minus 40 degrees in the winter. We were getting down to about sort of minus, minus five, Minus five, Pete the cameraman who's, uh, who's, who's <laughs> on the camera right now, who's in Mongolia with me and he just gave me the five symbol. Um, we got down to about minus five, so it wasn't really enough um, for us to see any noticeable difference. In fact, I saw a, a massive increase in, increase in our power, decrease in our power consumption. Our batteries were lasting a lot longer in Mongolia because the fridges weren't working so hard, yeah, that's it. which is a big one here for us in Queensland. Yeah. Your fridge is constantly just, just sucking power. Um, now, reports from the United States in, uh, for our customers that do have trailers in those, in those freezing uh, temperatures, we haven't had any reported issues here right now. I know in the early days we had customers that were fitting 12-volt uh, uh, heater blankets to the bottom of the tanks and all the rest of it to stop freezing. We live in Australia, we just don't know enough about it. Yeah. We don't know enough about freezing temperatures. Uh, but to answer the question, no, we have not experienced or heard of um, any issues. All of the, the plumbing fittings that go into uh, Patriot, uh, any Patriot campers are all John Guest uh, style fittings. So they are rated for those extreme temperatures. They're used in the caravan and RV industry right around the world. Um, biggest fridge that could What's go the biggest fridge? There's one for you, Tom. Yeah, biggest fridge that could go in a camper trailer. Look, uh, is a 60 litre. Um, but guys, uh, if you are picking one and you're not getting one from us, um, just check with us with the specs and the size of the slide uh, before you make any questions. Well, let's, look, let's actually, let's actually state what they are. You've got your Dometic uh, CFX55, yeah. which for me, weapon of choice, 100%, no two ways about it. With the ice machine now, yeah. I'm done. That's it. That's my fridge. Yeah? That's Moving forward. 
Evercool 60. 60, dual zone, yep. ARB 60. ARB 60. Pretty popular in the United States, not as popular here. The one here. with the blue lid that opens up like this, so. Yep. Just, just letting you know that one. Yeah, they just, they, it's just the colour combination doesn't really work in a Patriot, but mm. um, each their own. What else? I mean, that's, that's, I mean, obviously you could go a lot smaller. Uh, angles don't fit, They're, they tend to be too tall uh, on the trailer, so yeah. That's, okay. How long could you get out of a gas bottle that fits in the holder? Like, would you really need two bottles? That is, that's, uh, how long's a piece of string? Yeah. What, what are you doing with it? How much are you cooking on the stove? If you're talking about hot water consumption, I can tell you right now, a gas bottle, in my personal X1, I'd probably change the gas, because I don't, I don't cook with gas. Um, I would probably change the gas bottle maybe once a year. Mm. Maybe, just mm. running the hot water system. Yeah. The hot water system consumes nothing. I can't tell you an actual flow, but it's, it's negligible. Yeah. Uh, it depends on how much you cook. Uh, will you upgrade the kitchen drawers arrangement in the X1 to match the X3 with the large draw height? I can't see who that came from. Very, very, very attentive question. Uh, possibly, yeah, possibly. I think the new uh, draw uh, arrangement in the X3, you know, the X3 is lifted up. Yeah. Very, very cool. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got one person to thank for that, so that person will know who I'm talking about. Uh, why can't we buy an X2, uh, an X2 on Patriot Campers anymore? You can. X2 is still available. We're not promoting the X2 as much as we used to because? Yeah, we supply a tent basically. Um, we, you know, it's, we're just struggling with supplies of tent at the moment and so that's, that's the reason why. But yeah, I found a lot of people moving to the X1N. You know? that, that was the answer I was looking for. The X1N, look, to be, I mean, commercially as a business owner, it probably doesn't make a lot of sense me saying this, but realistically, if you're going to fork out that sort of money for a camper trailer, an X1N offers so much it's more than an X2. Better value for money. It's, it's yeah. much better value for money. So that's what you should be looking at. I, I would, we would suggest. Yeah. Yeah. But would, X2s are still going down the production line. Um, can those little carpet squares be replaced in case of damage or bad spill? Not a problem. You can order them uh, from Patriot Campers as a spare part. I'm sold on it already. Who would be the best person to contact on getting one? I'm in Queensland. Yeah. Here's your man right now in the office tomorrow um, or tonight. He doesn't stop. He's yeah. on the emails. Um, get on to him uh, tonight. Um, are you fit? Are you fit three self-inflating mattresses on mm. the floor of the kids' room? Yes, no problems. Three self-inflating mattresses like the Cedar Summit ones that we used no in problem. Mongolia. Not mm. a drama. Uh, self-inflating mattresses. Mongolia changed my whole world and my whole opinion when it comes to kids. I would never. My kids are too old now. If I could have that time back, mm. I would never ever carry a bunk ever again. Okay. I would never carry a bunk bed ever again. I can tell you right now what I would do. I would buy three of those Cedar Summit mattresses. It's a, it's a little game for young kids to blow them up. Right. You don't need hand pumps. You don't need electric pumps. They come with a little bag that you just blow into the bag and then squeeze it in and inflates the mattress. And I can tell you right now, hand on heart, some of the best night's sleep Really? Camping Something. I've ever had in my life. Amazing. Right. Amazing. Hey, Pete. Amazing. <laughs> Pete's over there nodding again. Um, <laughs> that's the way I would do it. I wouldn't run bunks. Bunks are bulky. They're clunky. They're hard to set up. They're, they're a nightmare to pack. They're heavy. They're Cedar Summit inflatable mattress. Have a look at them. What is the wheel uh, track width, please, Justin? From memory, I haven't been asked this question for a while, it's 1850, yeah. which is, it's almost identical to a Prado. Is that right? Yeah, that's how Okay, well right. there you go. Yeah. 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 So when we originally, when we designed the first, and again, can we bring back the heritage graphic? Memory. <laughs> look at you and me together in there, we look amazing. <laughs> when we designed the first X1, Sarah was driving a Prado. Yeah, uh, she was, remember her Kakadu? Oh, how yeah. good was it? It was amazing. It was one of the best cars that we've ever owned, honestly. It yeah. still is one of the best cars we ever owned and she would love to have one back. Um, but now she's driving a supercharged Hemi Ram. So actually, no, she wouldn't want to have one back because prying that car off Sarah, it'd, it'd have it's to be hard, out of her cold, dead fingers before you get the keys <laughs> to the Hemi. Um, so yeah, 1850 was originally designed uh, for a Prado. So that answers that. How long does the water heater tank to heat up? Assuming they're talking about uh, yeah, Wabasto, the, the diesel. diesel. It's about ten, roughly about 10 minutes uh, for it to get nice and hot. So you can set the timer. If you know you're pull, pulling up to camp around six o'clock, you actually set the timer to come on about quarter to six. Mm -hmm. or it's already, all ready to go. And you've got multiple points of setting that timer as well. If you're talking about the standard gas system, instant straight away. As soon as you fire it up, plug a gas bottle into it, you've got hot water straight away. 
Do you sell internationally? Yes, we have yes, representation. Yes. I've just pulled a cord out of my pocket. <laughs> I should be used to that by now. Um, do we sell internationally? Yes, we do. So we have a distributor in, in Oklahoma in the United States. Um, we also have a distributor in Mongolia, any other country. Um, we will service directly here from Patriot HQ. Um, we do send a lot of export, one-off export, but we yeah. cannot help with compliance in any other country outside of Mongolia and the United States. Shoot me an email. <laughs> Shoot Tommy an email. Would you recommend an X1 or an X2 for a small family? I'll let you answer that one. Oh. It depends how small the family is. But look, again, X1, hands down, that is the one to go for, uh, for a small family, guys. Um, honestly, with the, with the price point, you know, spend a little bit more and get a lot more. Right? Yep. That's, that's sort of what I recommend. All right, so I think we're going to wrap up the Q&A about there. And um, that's, that's this week's virtual show done. We've that's, gone over time, but that's a big one. There's a lot to get through in the X1, guys. And anything that we've missed, please do not hesitate to contact any of our international sales team. Let's run through who they are again, Tom. Yeah, so we've got um, Exploration Outfitters uh, in Oklahoma um, in the US. We've got um, TIC in Mongolia. We've got uh, Patriot Campus Queensland, obviously. Um, Off-grid Outfitters in New South Wales. We've got Campy Adventures in Victoria. We've got uh, TJ and Nailsworth in South Australia uh, and, uh, and Perth as well. So that, that about wraps up um, the dealers. Any more information on the products? Go through our YouTube channel. There's some great information there. Have a look at our social media pages. Um, if you want to see what, more specifically what these camper trailers are capable of, what the places they can take you, what they can do um, for your family experiences, <coughs> make sure you jump onto Patriot, uh, Patriot Games. Subscribe to that YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Follow us right through on social media. Yes, you can actually pick up the phone and talk to Tommy about sales. Yes, I do work here. I'm here every day. <laughs> I'm more than happy to answer uh, anyone's questions and love seeing, uh, love seeing our, our, our um, I don't even know what the word is. It's not fans, is it? It's people that have the pride in the brand That's the it, same yeah. way that we do for Australian manufacturing and love what Patriot Campus does here. And it's the same with any of the dealers uh, right around the world. Tune in next Wednesday for the next virtual show. What are we doing next week? X1H. X1H, and this one is going to be exciting. Uh, we'll see you next Wednesday, 6 o'clock, here, live at Patriot HQ. See you later.